We have learned how to solve linear inequalities and in this topic, let's take a look at how we can also solve for quadratic inequalities. And on the board here with me, I have a quadratic inequality. And how do we know that this inequality is quadratic in nature? Expanding the left-hand side expression, we have a 8x minus x squared. This is bigger or equal to 15x squared. This signal to me that I'm dealing with a quadratic inequality. So how do we solve for a quadratic inequality? Follow me. The first thing that we want to do is to make sure that one side of the inequality is equal to zero. And to achieve this, I can either shift everything over to the left-hand side or I can also shift everything over to the right-hand side. So let's say we have decided that I'm going to shift everything over to the left-hand side. So what I'll be getting is a 8x minus x squared minus 15. This is bigger or equal to zero. And what I want to do next is uh, actually a preference of mine which is to make sure that when I'm dealing with a quadratic inequality, I want to make sure that the coefficient of x squared is always positive. Okay, I'm going to explain to you why later, but let me continue first. So the coefficient of x squared that I have with me now is negative 1. Okay, and this is not my preference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the whole inequality and I'll multiply it throughout by minus 1. Or I can also try to shift everything over to the other side of the inequality. So let's say I try to multiply this inequality by minus 1. So minus x squared will give me an x squared. This will be minus 8x. And this is going to become plus 15. This is going to be bigger or equal to 0? No, because we have multiplied this inequality by minus 1. So let's not forget that we have to swap the inequality symbol. So it becomes less than or equal to 0. And the next thing to do is to actually make use of our ability to sketch graph of a quadratic function to solve this inequality. The quadratic function that I'm going to be sketching is going to be y equal to the expression of the quadratic function here. So I'm going to sketch the graph of y is equal to x squared minus x plus 15. The coefficient of x squared is positive, so I'll be expecting a smiley face. And I'll also be expecting this graph to potentially cut the x-axis. So to do that, I'm going to try to factorize this, which is factorizing this quadratic expression over here. So factorizing this, you're going to be getting a x minus 3 and x minus 5. This is going to be less than or equal to 0. And this will help me to know the coordinates of this point here and this point here. It will be 3 and 5. Five. So now I know how to sketch this graph and I'm going to sketch a scaled down version of this graph here as part of my solution. So I'm going to just sketch this smiley face and this smiley face is going to be cutting the x-axis. And here and here will be these two points here where the x-coordinate here is going to be 3, the x-coordinate here is going to be equal to 5. But let's not forget what this graph here is representing. Okay, This graph here is representing the graph of y is equal to x minus 3, x minus 5, or y is equal to this. So how will this graph help me to solve the inequality? Let's take a look at the inequality again, and let's ask ourselves, what exactly am I trying to find? Okay, I'm trying to find the range of values of x such that this expression here is less than or equal to 0. This expression here is less than or equal to 0. On my graph, this expression here is represented by the y-coordinate that is on the graph. So let me ask myself again, looking at the graph, what is the range of values of x such that the y-coordinates are less than or equal to 0? Can you see that the x-coordinate are supposed to be from 3 all the way until 5? As long as x is between 3 to 5, the y-coordinates are going to be less than or equal to zero. And this helps me to solve the inequality. My solution to this inequality is x is bigger or equal to three, and x is less than or equal to five. I'm just basically transporting this, this inequality symbol to here. If it has an equal to, then it will be equal to, equal to. If it is strictly less than, then x is going to be between three and five, and this is strictly bigger than, this is going to be strictly less than, without the equal notation. And this is how we solve a quadratic inequality. But just now, I was, I was trying to tell you that I have a preference. And my preference came in from here to here. So my preference was to make sure that the coefficient of x squared is always positive. And I'll actually encourage you guys to do that also. But what if we don't want to work with 
a quadratic inequality where the coefficient of x squared is, is positive. Can we do that? Yes, we can. It is going to be the alternative set of solution that I gave in the outline here. Let me explain to you. So if I were to not try to make the coefficient of x squared to become positive, so I'm going to continue from here, okay? So if I were to continue from here, I'm going to be working on a minus x squared plus 8x minus 15. This is bigger or equal to 0. I did something just now, which I don't think that is how we usually carry out the process in the, in the exam or in our, in our homework, which is this process of factorization. Okay, of, of course, some people, they tend to use uh, a bit of mental sum to factorize, but I believe most of, most of us probably make use of our calculator to help us to factorize quadratic expression, right? So let's try what if we were to do, do this in a more realistic manner, okay? So from here, I'm going to factorize, then I'm going to draw the graph, right? So I'm going to try to factorize this quadratic expression and let's use the calculator to do that factorization. So calculator, let me go to equations and I'm dealing with a quadratic. And the coefficients that I'm looking at is uh, minus 1, 8 and minus 15. So let me go for that. The coefficients are minus 1 positive 8 and minus 15. Okay, let's solve this. We have two roots. One is 5, the other one is 3. Okay, one is 5, the other one is 3. Let me show you again. One is 5, then the other one is 3. So now I'm going to factorize this. One is 5, one is 3. So x minus 3, x minus 5. This is bigger or equal to 0. And I attempt to continue by sketching the graph and then making use of the graph, just like how we did it here to find a solution to the inequality. But do you realize that something is wrong? And the place that has made a mistake is actually this factorization part portion. In this factorization portion, if I were to re-expand this, the first mistake that you can see is x times x gives you x squared. It didn't give you negative x squared. But this should be negative x squared because it was factorized from this expression here. How did this happen? Was it because my calculator has factorized this wrongly? No, the calculator has not factorized this wrongly. The problem is we are treating it as if the calculator was trying to solve an inequality, but it wasn't. The calculator was just simply trying to solve for an equation. So what the calculator did was to look at minus x squared plus 8x minus 15 is equal to 0 instead of having an inequality symbol. It was looking at it as if it is equal to 0. And it gave, you, gave us roots. The roots are x is equal to 3 or x is equal to 5. And if I were to take this equation and I'll multiply it throughout by minus 1, that gives me uh, x squared minus 8x plus 15 is equal to 0. And if I were to press this into the calculator, I am also going to be getting the same two roots. Because the calculator doesn't differentiate whether it is this equation or this equation, because when it comes to the perspective of equations, these two are the same. And that is why it is up to us when we want to use our calculator, which we must first acknowledge that it was actually trying to solve for an equation. If we were to use it to do a factorization of an expression, we need to manually take care of whether we are looking at this instance or this instance. For example, this, if I were to just simply take the roots, plant it back in, I'm, I'm assuming that it is just this instance, but it was not. And that is why I need to manually add in one more symbol, which is a negative one in front, so that when I expand this, x times x is x squared, but multiply by minus one, it gives me a minus x squared. So this is the additional process, which is not a very difficult process, but the problem is because we tend to use our calculator, that is why what I saw was a lot of careless mistakes has been made when it, come, when, when it comes to an inequality that went from this to this. So my aim is to actually try to avoid careless mistake. And to avoid that, that was why I have this preference here, which I high, highly recommend you guys do, which is to make sure that before you factorize, why not just re-express the inequality such that the coefficient of x squared is always positive. Then you will not run into the problem of pressing your calculator to factorize and yet forgetting to add in a negative one when it is necessary. But this is still not wrong. This is still totally incorrect. Uh, this is still totally correct. 
this is still totally correct because we can still continue to use the same process. We can draw graph from this point onwards. The graph will be a set phase. Why? Because the coefficient of x squared is negative. So the graph, instead of a smally phase, now we are dealing with a set phase. And for this set phase, these two points here will have x coordinates as 3 and 5. Looking at this inequality, what are we trying to solve for? We are trying to solve for the range of values of x such that this expression, which is now, which is now captured by the y coordinate that is on this graph. Because this graph is y is equal to minus x minus 3, x minus 5. So the y coordinates is supposed to be bigger or equal to 0. What is the range of values of x such that this will happen? This will happen when x is between 3 and 5. Then y will be bigger or equal to 0. So my solution to this is x is bigger or equal to 3, x is less than or equal to 5. And because we are solving for the same question, that is why I am getting the same answer. These are two different ways that we can solve for a quadratic inequality. My personal preference is this, where the coefficient of x squared is positive. That's all I have for solving a quadratic inequality. And I'm going to see you in the next topic.